Today's lesson is on DNA replication. If you are doing this, make sure that you have to understand the whole idea of DNA being anti-parallel for you to understand this video. So if you don't understand that, you need to go back and review the whole structure of DNA. So what we're going to talk about is how does DNA replicate itself? So for example, you're basically looking at DNA as being a double helix, very simplified picture of this, and DNA replication says, how do I get two of these structures? How does this happen? So we're going to go through that process. These two, this structure and this structure would be identical if we were looking at DNA bases. If this is A, then this would have to be T. And that would mean that this has to be A and this has to be T. And it would continue all the way down, being completely complementary. And the left strand here would be identical to this strand here. So we have replicated that piece of DNA. So let's take a look at how we understand this process. So in order to understand how DNA replicates, we have to understand five different enzymes and what they do. So the first enzyme is something called helicase. Helicase is an enzyme that breaks apart DNA. In order for you to replicate it, you've got to break it apart. So I'm going to show a, here's my DNA structure, a very simplified DNA structure. I'm not drawing each individual nucleotide. This line represents the backbone of alternating sugars and phosphates. And so then what I would do is um, this would be my sequences, my, my bonds that connect to my nitrogen bases. So I'm going to have an arbitrary number of these, and I might fill in some bases, A, T, C, you can see on the thing. I'm just making up letters just to show you what this would look like. All right. And then on this, you would have its complement. I guess I drew these a little too close, sorry. So you should be able to follow this, where we're creating the complementary strand. Now, how did these break? This adenine from this thymine? Because the helicase went through. So what I'd say is that little wedge that kind of simulates what a, a helicase might be doing. It's broken all these hydrogen bonds. And if you recall, these down here, they're still connected. They are connected via hydrogen bonds. So what we did is we went in and broke those, those hydrogen bonds. And what we're going to start to do is create another complementary strand that is opposite. These are the old strands, or sometimes the parent strand. So that's the first thing. I will say that even these um, nitrogen bases are somewhat arbitrary. So I'm going to kind of take a, uh, a step back, and it actually limits how much I can work with because of the amount of space that the, the letters take up. So I'm going to do the same basic thing, but I'm not going to identify any more nitrogen bases. I'll leave a little bit more room here. So let's pretend that the, the helicase has made its, all, its way down here. One thing that we have to remember from last video is that DNA is anti-parallel. So if this is a five prime end, um, I would have to give you that. That's not something you can tell just by a simple line. That would have to mean that the opposite strand down here, the anti-parallel is a three prime. If this is three prime, this end is five prime. If this end is five, then we gotta have a three up there. So what we have to do now is add our new strand that should be complementary to whatever sequence is on here. A new strand is going to be complementary. So you got to imagine that. I'm not going to draw letters. So what I'm going to do is draw two lines. Unfortunately, there's an enzyme that adds these new nucleotides. And that enzyme is called DNA polymerase. But DNA polymerase can only add nucleotides in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction. So every DNA molecule has a 5' prime and 3' prime end. DNA polymerase can only add new nucleotides to that 3' prime end. 
So that gives us a little bit of a hiccup when we're duplicating our DNA. So what I would do is I'm going to identify this is my three prime, this is my five prime, and then here is my three prime end of the new strand. Down here on the old strand we have a five prime, so on the right side of the new strand we have a three. That means on the left side we have a five. So with that rule being stated that DNA polymerase can only add on the three prime side, here is my three prime side up here, here is my three prime side over here. So the direction in which DNA polymerase works is basically follow the, the pen here, the, the cursor, from five to three. Notice it's going from right to left, which is the direction which helicase was opening the bond. Helicase started down here and has been working from right to left. So this strand is being made in the same fashion or the same direction as helicase is moving. That makes this what's known as the leading strand. Because the nucleotides would be added as they are in the same direction as helicase is moving. It's a very easy strand to make. So whatever nitrogen base is here, this would be the complement, and it's just going to keep going down as quickly as helicase can move. But there's a little hiccup on the strand down here, because notice that the only way that this strand can work is if there is nucleotides on the right-hand side. That is working against the direction of helicase. And that is just an unfortunate way that the enzyme has been trained, or that's how it works. So here's what has to happen. This strand is called the lagging strand. It's a bit more complicated to work with. So the lagging strand has to work in the direction that is opposite of helicase. So what will happen is, instead of adding the first nucleotide right here on the end, it waits a little bit, hence the lagging. It lags behind. It waits just a little bit, and instead will lay its first nucleotide maybe a little bit downstream. Now there's some, this is the three prime side. So here's my three prime side on the right hand side. So it adds to the right. So it will go back all the way to the end of the DNA strand. While this has been happening, helicase opened just a little bit more. So there's been a little bit more exposure. So another strand will go. And this time it doesn't have to go all the way back to the end. It only goes back to where it started the last time. And it just keeps doing this over and over again. So it's a little bit more complicated than the leading strand, but it's important to know that one strand is made with the direction of helicase and the other strand is made against it. So let's do a little practice to see if you can really get this. So what I'll do is uh, let's draw it from a different perspective. Let's draw with helicase opening from left to right. So there's my helicase. Let's identify down here the three prime. I'm just making that up. So this would be my five prime. So what I would say is I'm going to draw a new strand here and a new strand here. You're basically going to put arrows on the end in which it would elongate or um, in which direction would the strand be made. So we're trying to identify which one is going to point towards the helicase and which one's going to point away from helicase. This is my guideline right here, the three and five that I drew originally. If this is three, there's my five. If this is five, now this is three. If this is three, this is five. There's my five, so on the other end is my three. If this is three, that's five, and that is three. Always point to basically, on the new strand, point at three. So that tells me the direction. So this strand is made in a leading fashion. This strand is my lagging. So that shows how it's a little bit more complicated to, to build one strand than the other. In the next video, we're going to really dissect the the production of this lagging strand. Um, we've talked about two different enzymes, but there's a few more that we have to discuss. So I want to kind of have its own little video to discuss that concept of how to build a leading versus lagging strand.